Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we go racing here in the uh, only Cup Series at Bristol Motor Speedway. No Truck Series or Xfinity Series or anything of course joining along for that matter along with the Cup Series at Bristol Motor Speedway here for today's episode. So pretty straightforward coming into this one here running the chain smokers paint scheme that I made quite some time back. We actually have that car bank out here on the track today but very excited coming into this one because at Bristol Motor Speedway we've had a good track record. We've won multiple times at this track in what has been a winless season so far. This is the track to get us back on track in the right direction and hopefully we can start that with a strong qualifying effort. And there you see with a 15767 we qualify inside the top 10 in P9. So very happy with that qualifying effort as Matt DiBedededo is on pole along with Kyle Busch joining him on that front row and rounding out the top 10. You got uh, myself as well as Tyler Reddick as you look through the rest of that qualifying order on your screen. Very uh, bottom of the grid, got Logano, as well as Todd Gilliland and CJ McLaughlin. All right, boys, this is the place that we can get things really going in our direction. We've been having some strong speed lately. I think we got a good shot tonight, so let's go have a good one. And there you hear myself on the radio to the team. Like I said, very excited for this one. We've had strong results here in the past. We've won races. We've, of course, lost races here. So we don't know exactly what to expect coming into this one, but I'm sure that we're, at the end of the day, going to be a strong competitor for the win here today now as Noah Gregson and Kyle Larson both to the back of the pack. Gregson for technical inspection failures as well as Kyle Larson and engine change after qualifying. So we get ready to go green here on the inside line from the ninth position. Tyler Reddick on our outside on the road in front of us. We got Ryan Priest and Kid Brad Kozlowski. Kozlowski side by side with the car he used to drive last season here in the career motors. The green flag though is out and we are underway here from Bristol Motor Speedway here in the night race. The only time as well that we even come to Bristol this season. As you guys know with this custom modded schedule I took tracks like Bristol and Martinsville and took them from two races and put them to one and simply because they are one of those tracks where we always have a shot at winning. So I, I wanted to try and get almost quote unquote free wins uh, as little as possible throughout the schedule. De Benedetto though leading the way down the back straight away here. 125 laps here today from Bristol. 30 laps in this first and opening stage. So we got the time to work our way forwards now as uh, once I'm able to get to that top lane you're going to definitely see me jump up there as there's a bit of a moment there as I got hit from the back from the 19 of Harrison Burton and then he kind of slid up the track there. Lost some track position to the 6 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We're just making some ground here on the inside now as we're trying to pass that McLaren driver of Eric Jones who will return to that team and be teammates along side Chase Elliott next season but a little bit later now on lap five William Byron had really fallen off and I was able to make a move to his inside and finally we got up to this outside lane here as we moved up into P6 but then we run down Jones again and instead of staying up top I actually dropped back down to the bottom because he was deciding to uh, hold on to that top lane there so now Justin Haley was actually out front we've seen him lead a couple times recently here uh, so he's been picking it up with this colleague racing team of course they are going to need an absolute miracle to be even in the top 30 in points if they ended up winning a race here now as I would get to the outside of Kyle Busch and then we were starting to make this outside line roll finally here for the first time in this first and opening stage of this race here in Bristol as I would get to the outside of Priest and unfortunately couldn't make it happen because he got to the inside of Matt DiBenedetto so I had to follow through now with Priest here uh, down the back straight away in towards turns three. So now we move up into P3 and then again I try jumping up to the top. Well Priest decides he's going to take the top. So now on 15 laps to go in stage one of the inside again. So surprisingly we're really able to make this inside line work in our favor and that's not very often we can do that. So that was making me feel very very confident with what we had in this uh, car for the rest of this race. It definitely felt a little bit loose and I was expecting it to get looser as this run went on. So I was thinking we were going to have to make some adjustments at the pit stop but the caution comes out for the first time here today in Bristol. Nobody coming to the pit lane here so we will be staying out and getting ready to go green. Lewis Hamilton had just went a lap down in the Mercedes 44 car and he is actually going to come into the pit lane here so my guess is he's going to get the lucky dog so when he comes into the pit lane that means at the end of stage one he actually might be able to stay out because we're only going to run maybe 10 laps at the absolute most here. So now we are on the front row alongside Justin Haley as we did move up into that second position. And once we get back underway now, actually less than 10 laps to go. We only have eight laps to get the job done here and trying to get, our, I think, only, what, second or third? I think it would be our third stage win on the season here as we go up against the 16 of Haley down this back straightaway into turns. Three priests there in that third position. Austin Dillon up into the mix. The Coca-Cola 600 winner now as I get very loose out of turns four. And that was becoming 
more of an issue here as this run was going on. So I knew that once again, like I had already mentioned, we're going to have to adjust upon that when we get to the end of this first stage and we all come into the pit lane here as we're just trying to make this top line roll and get it to our advantage to where we can pass that number 16 of Justin Haley as we go down into turns uh, uh, one and two. Now, once again, side by side, but he gets clear on the exit of the corner now as I couldn't really roll through the exit of turns two uh, as well as many others here in the field. But out of turns four, you can see the difference. We are so good out of turns four now side by side with Haley with five to go in this first and opening stage. As we exit turns two again, though, you see that run isn't quite there. That allows Haley to get back even with myself as we go down into turns three and four. So that was really the weak spot of the track for myself. But out of turns four, that was the big strong uh, spot because we would get clear of the 16 and then lead the way to the final lap here in stage one and only leading a few laps here in stage one but I think we're still already have led more laps than we have all season combined just in this race here as we come through turns three and four on this final lap in stage one and we will come through to win the first and opening stage here in the Bristol night race nice stuff guys I mean the car feels pretty good it's a little bit loose we definitely need to work on that but I mean other than that I mean we we're still able to win the stage so good stuff there you hear myself on the radio after a stage victory here in stage one of course two stages to go and a very lengthy third and final stage of course uh, as you see the rest of the order so Lewis Hamilton he sure enough decides he is going to actually stay out you see me make a very slight wedge adjustment and tire pressure adjustment as well I was thinking about maybe even messing with the grill tape a little bit so I put it up to 35 percent Chase Elliott not even in the top 30 right now by the way so he's having a really really rough race so far in a time where he cannot afford a rough race and of course that only helps a driver like myself here as we're going to get ready to go green for the start of the second stage so lewis hamilton gets to stay out after getting the lucky dog and pitting under the last caution and now he will be the leader for the start of this second stage here from bristol motor speedway and for the start of stage two here in bristol it is time to get amped There you have the AM segment here from Bristol Motor Speedway now as we're under pressure from the 14 of Chase Briscoe and he gets clear out of turn two. One of those drivers that we do not need to see winning a race at this point in the season as that will only hurt us even more in the playoff grid but he had a ton of speed and you're going to see here now on lap eight the gap had really been opened up now as we came through turns three and out of turn four so I was very very concerned uh, with seeing that 14 drive away and he was running the bottom and really well and and I actually spent about a lap or two trying to run that bottom. Couldn't do anything. I actually lost more time than I was losing up on the top. But no matter what, I was just losing time lap after lap to that 14 of Briscoe. But then on lap 15, already past the halfway point in stage two. Well, we had now run down some lap traffic. So we knew that was going to be our opportunity to potentially close that gap to the 14 of Briscoe. And by the time it came through lap 17, we are just fully engulfed in these lap cars. But we weren't really gaining anything yet on that 14 of Briscoe now as you see me getting a little bit aggressive getting into the back of the Mercedes car there of uh, Todd Gilliland in that number 38 front row motorsports uh, Ford or <laughs> Mercedes AMG but we come through out of turns four and we get past him and just continue to try to move our way forwards Briscoe he'd actually jumped up to the top for a brief moment and that was allowing me to get very close to him within the next few laps now on lap 28 laps to go we had gotten close and then the caution actually comes out and it looks like it could be for the 11 car of Denny Hamlin as he is the only driver coming into the pit lane so I do believe that Denny Hamlin does cause the caution here now as we're going to get ready to go back green again Lewis Hamilton this time is pitting as well and of course we are going to stay out we can't afford to maybe pit here and stay out at the end of stage three because we need every single stage point possible especially when you got a guy like Briscoe running up here P1 for the restart. 
So far, though, been a strong race for this number 24 Hendrick Motorsports team as we are back underway and now only five laps to go in this second stage. On row number two behind us, Eric Almorola side by side with Justin Haley for that colleague racing team as we fight back on that right hand side of Briscoe down into turns three. We know that these restarts, we're going to have a good opportunity to really fight against that 14 of Briscoe now, no matter how strong he is when we have that advantage of the outside and we're already side by side on the restart, we know we're going to have a chance to hold it at least here as we approach just three laps to go in the stage now as we sail it off into turns three and unfortunately right there not good enough of a run I really messed up my exit so that allowed Briscoe to get a little bit ahead here as we came through though turns one and out of turns two another mistake right there I got a little bit too tight uh, so now I was like you know what we got to loosen it back up here at the end of the stage but Briscoe he decides to jump up to the top so I now cross him over get down to the bottom but I clipped the apron there got sideways and that allowed Briscoe to stay clear of myself but we sail it back up the inside through turns one and out of turn two now a lap and a half to go here in the second stage and we're sailing it off into turns three not enough to get clear though as we come through out of turns four briscoe barely at a right rear quarter panel white flag for stage two in the air as we go off into one and two for the final time and we have the inside line which is not an advantage for myself and you're seeing it or myself paying the price as we go into turns three and four for the final time here in stage two side by side for the final few laps out of turns four though we will win stage two over Chase Briscoe and sweep the first two stages. Briscoe, hands down the fastest car right now in the field here for Bristol, but we were still able to pull off the stage victory right there, just barely over him now as we're going to, of course, come back into the pit lane, take two cans of fuel, take four fresh tires, uh, but the problem was that the car at times felt a little bit too tight and that was a bit of an issue for myself so I was thinking about coming in to loosen it up again so I basically just went back where we were already at with the wedge and that was the only adjustment I made because I didn't want to go right back to where we were because that was originally too loose so uh, I was overall pretty confident still with the car now obviously winning the first two stages we haven't done that this season Denny Hamlin takes the lead because he was able to stay out after pinning under that first caution in stage two around the same time that we had that caution in stage one when Lewis Hamilton uh, was able to pit and then come back out or stay out at the next caution. So we get back underway now for the start of this third and final stage. And there's only 61 laps to go in this race. So we're already well over halfway through here as we got Briscoe up our inside. But we know Denny Hamlin already doesn't have the fresh tires like the rest of the field does. So we know that it's just a matter of time until we're able to get to his outside and potentially make a pass on that 11 of Denny Hamlin now in his final race ever in his Cup Series career at Bristol Motor Speedway as we go in to turns three and four trying to get to that outside you saw behind myself Austin Dillon having a very strong run here tonight in Bristol that is not a good thing because if Austin Dillon continues to have some good runs and gets into the top 30 in points all of a sudden he's in the playoffs because of that win he just picked up at the Coca-Cola 600 but now on lap 68 through turn three to the outside of Denny Hamlin as we come through into turn four starting lap 69 nice as we come through to 57 laps to go and we get clear of Denny just for a brief moment but not quite enough to make it happen down the back straight away now as he is still up my inside but through turns three and four we know this is our strong point on the track and it shows right here out of turns four we get clear of Hamlin I did clip that wall just a tiny bit as we went down into the corner but fortunately it uh, doesn't cause any damage to us now as we come through out of turns two Hamlin tries to fight back ends up having absolutely nothing but it was not over Chase Briscoe looked up the inside of Hamlin drove right on by him and then runs me down and in no time and on lap 72 now he looks up my inside through turns three and four and now Chase Briscoe once again showing the speed in that high point Ford Mustang for Stuart Haas racing as he looks for his first win on the season. He has really picked it up lately here in the crew mode and now he moves back to the lead and then Ryan Priest in the two car as well was running me down on lap 75 so all of a sudden I'm at risk of losing second place to that two car for Penske Racing. Definitely was caught a bit off guard by this now. We knew the 14 was absolutely the fastest car here but the two car really hadn't been showing uh, the speed to be up here in the top three all race long so all of a sudden here he is and I make a mistake out of turns four there on lap 78 I clipped the outside wall and now unfortunately we lose a bunch of ground that we're gonna have to try and make up but fortunately lap traffic is now in the mix so we have a good opportunity here to run these guys down and probably in another 10 or so laps when they're going going to be fully engulfed in those lap cars now as we look up the inside of Lewis Hamilton there's a crash into turns one though it's the number 47 of Ross Chastain who's gone around and the caution comes out and that is going to force everybody 
into the pit lane here. A very easy call to make it was. It was uh, just uh, half a can of fuel to make sure we had enough. And then four tires now. Because if we do not take four tires, uh, everybody else is absolutely going to. And then, of course, we're just going to throw our own race away here. So uh, it's kind of tough to make a call here at this point in Bristol. Because uh, usually the logic behind the AI is just take uh, enough fuel to get to the end. And usually two tires at the most. But here we only need half a can of fuel to make it, but the AI still do elect to take four tires. So we make the right call, get ready to go back green from the third position now, as we're going to be lined up right on the back bumper of that 14 of Chase Briscoe. we got two Fords on that front row as the green flag is back out. A horrendous restart there for the three of Austin Dillon. My guess is he got a piece of that accident with the 47 when he was coming by after the caution, because there's no other reason he should have been so slow on the restart. Of course, that helps us a lot now as Eric Almarola runs in four place Kyle Larson is side by side with Austin Dillon currently for that fifth position here just 41 laps to go at this point now as we look up the inside of the two of Ryan Priest and we know we got to get a move on it look at that 14 of Chase Briscoe he is hauling the mail right now on lap 87 he had already checked out about a whole straightaway ahead nearly of myself and Ryan Priest now as we come through to turns four I was getting a little bit aggravated with running around Priest I couldn't pass him on the inside and I said you know what my only opportunity here to get past is two cars. I'm going to have to rough him up. So down this back straight away into turn three. I'm just going to run into the back of the two and give him the bump and run as he goes sideways when we make it uh, through and back up into second place we go with 37 laps to go. So now we try to focus on running down that 14 of Chase Briscoe. Now I was so aggressive with that pass because uh, if Briscoe wins, that once again completely changes the situation for our season. So now with 26 laps to go, we're once again working our way through these lap cars there as I clip the apron and get a little bit sideways out of turns too. But Briscoe, he was doing a tremendous job to be completely honest with you guys uh, at working his way through this lab traffic now and that was making it even more frustrating because I was having a tough time get to him or getting to him so now with 20 laps to go he was actually stuck behind I believe that was a 12 of Daniel Hemrick now as I'm putting my teammate of Chase Elliott a lap down he's having a terrible night here in Bristol very unfortunate for him as he will be going to McLaren next season as you guys know uh, but we would also get up the inside of Timmy Hill and put him a lap down as well with 19 laps to go but Briscoe ends up getting past those three cars so we're just trying to work our way forwards now we got to the back of Ryan Blaney and Briscoe still stuck behind some traffic and his problem now was the traffic was side by side here with 16 laps to go so that was going to bring myself into the picture some contact up there actually between Briscoe and the 21 of Anthony Alfredo so now out of turns two on lap 111 and we are finally here into the mix if it wasn't for lap traffic Briscoe would have run away with the victory but these guys have no idea what moving out of the way is and that's one of the most frustrating parts about the AI here in NASCAR Heat 5 I get there and I get right to the back the 21 and I don't want to waste any time I want to get out in front and drive away now on lap 113 out of turn 2 getting aggressive there forcing it 3 wide we get past the 21 I clip the wall into turn 3 but it doesn't do any damage we even get past our rival of Joey Logano here as we exit turns 4 gets into my quarter panel a little bit but now clear as we are now in the lead with just over 10 laps to go here from Bristol Motor Speedway Briscoe fading behind us now as we go down into turns 3 and now all of a sudden what I did not realize was happening was Christopher Bell in the 20 car was moving his way through the field very very quickly now and he was actually up into third place as I run down my own going racing Chevrolet Camaro here driven by Daniel Ricciardo once again this will be his final race of course in the cup series before we'll have a new driver in the next episode as well uh, replacing the injured Daniel Suarez but now on lap 118 I'm having to work my way through this double file lap traffic and now all of a sudden Christopher Bell makes a pass on the 14 of Briscoe and moves up into the runner up position so I see that happening I force it three wide as we come through out of turns two and uh, now Bell gets through just as easily here as I set it up the inside of the 23 Bubba Wallace and Bell is all over my back bumper here as we exit turns four and we get onto the apron too much we lose the car out of turns four and we just had potentially the biggest choke of our whole cup series career with the playoffs on the line and now we have lost the lead and second place all in just one moment as you can imagine I was very frustrated I got to the 14 I said get out of my way I don't want to deal with you right now I want to try my best to get to that 20 car uh, I apologize looking back on it 
two chases. I also lost him another spot to the three of Austin Dillon. But the 20 car, he had passed everybody. He was long gone. There was no catching him. It was over for us now with four laps to go. Uh, and we're going to have to settle for second place. But then as that happens, the 16 of Haley blows a right front tire. Caution comes out. And all of a sudden, we're going to be forced into overtime here. Of course, nobody coming into the pit lane. So we're going to be starting on the outside of the front row. So the biggest choke potentially of my Cup Series career has put us in a position now where we're going to have to try and use this outside here to get the race victory in overtime. So we've been given a second chance now as we are back underway. Two laps to go behind us. We got the three of Austin Dillon. We got the 14 of Chase Briscoe now as we are side by side with that 20 of Bell down this back. Straight away already a bit of a mistake right there. Our exit turns to again to the outside wall as we sail it off into turns three and four trying to get the best exit possible and out of turns four. White flag in the air. We get to the outside again of oh, Christopher Bell. Some contact between myself and the 20 as we come through out of turns two and now he's clear but sideways we get to the back of him now as we try to look up the inside into turns three and four for the final time in Bristol now as we're right on his door as we come through out of turns four side by side coming to the line we slam doors but it's not enough as the 20 had the momentum off the top and was able to even push through the contact between himself and I in a photo finish Christopher Bell wins and we have to settle for second place which is our best finish of the season. Christopher Bell wins his second race on the season. There was uh, not a whole lot I could have done there. I could have honestly uh, maybe just throttled up earlier out of the corner and then just put him in the wall. Uh, maybe looking back at it, that's what I would have done. But I came out of turns four and I realized that he had so much momentum uh, that I had to at least try something. So I just turned dead right into him. Unfortunately, it was not enough. So that was a very, very frustrating moment right there. Of course, we choked and that put us in a position to be on the outside in the first place. We could have been in control of that restart instead and probably would have ran away with the victory. So very, very frustrating in that kind of sense. Uh, but at the same time, uh, right now, that really helps us still, though, having Christopher Bell win. But of course, it would have been so much better if we would have gotten to victory lane. Now on a 19 race winless streak, by the way, because our last win was at Phoenix in the season finale last season of the career mode. But in the next episode, we go to Indianapolis, the Oval, which is also the track that we got our very first career win at in our Cup Series career. So I'm very confident. Uh, I'm, I, I won't want to call my shot saying we're going to win, but I, I legitimately think we're going to be uh, a car capable of winning. And I think we will win at the Brickyard 400 in the next episode. As always, if you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. There you see the next upcoming track. Still a good chunk of time left in the regular season and only three spots left in on points. We have to win to make sure we're safe. So uh, once again, though, before we end this episode, just would like to say a quick thank you to the Going Racing members on the channel of MJ, Joseph9001, Timothy Arline, Bubba Jr., Brett Durward, Dark Gengar Gaming, AJ Vasseur, Russell Dixon, Kenneth Barnett, Dana9302, as well as King Matt XL. You guys helped me out so much as I always say and I really do appreciate the support time and time again so thank you once again and I'll see you guys in the next one have a great day everybody